What is up guys? Welcome back to JK Fishing. It has been a very long time since our last post. School's been catching up down in Florida here. Uh, there's just a lot of other things that got on my mind, so it's been tough. I'm sorry about that, but we got one hell of an episode for you guys down in Florida, heading out offshore out of Jupiter Inlet. First, we all get some bait, and then we're gonna head offshore. See you guys out there. Fish. I'm gonna guess like a grunt. I mean, hey, if it's a snapper, I'm pumped. And we found this spot. But I have a little bit of a long lead coming from this way. He's pretty light, so I don't even need to put the rod in my hair. Ooh, nice. Mutton. Undersized, Undersized mutton. muttons. These muttons, sharp gill plates, sharp everything. Whee! Nice Good job, Jamie. Wow. Yeah, those around your line. Right, guys, so these fish are beautiful. In the Keys, they got really good fishing for them. And although I said flag, it's not really a flag yellowtail, but this is a nice, this is a nice one. So you got to be careful, very sharp gill plates on these bad boys. I mean, with all snapper, very sharp spines. And they do have little teeth. Look at the little teeth. Mm. But yeah, they'll pick your bait. They'll cut off the tail of your mullet and leave the head. These snapper are very picky and leader shy, so get some more. I'm hooked up again. This Ooh, time, he's small. He's small. once again, it's Joe. He's Now he's floating up. So once I got him off the bottom. Tell me the little yeah. freaking mutton again. Undersized mutton. That's my second undersized mutton today. Bro. He did not swallow it. You hooked him um, right in the I, top I didn't, of the jaw. I didn't feel anything. I just reeled up. So like, you might have to use a venting device for this one. So all this tool is, it's like a, uh, yeah, well, you used to play the basketball the or whatever. So you punch a it. needle. <laughs> so, got it. Get him down here. I just don't want to. And all you do, you pop right there. You hear the air come out? Yeah. You hear the air come out? Stomach goes back. His stomach is popping out a bit too. And he just lost like a lot of his wit. So now, look at him. Let him go, buddy. Go swim right back down. Check that. There you go. These, yeah, these things cost like five bucks at a local tackle shop. So do it because, you know, in a couple of years, that guy's going to be a keeper. Exactly. Someone's going to want to eat him. So, yeah. Joe is on uh, something. Better. Probably someone else's rod. Uh, He's fighting Jack. Oh my god, man. That's That's beautiful. a yellow tail. That's beautiful. Oh, I, th I thought you were going to get pissed. No. I saw the tail. Is that 12? Like, easy. 12 to the floor. 12 and 3 quarters, baby. There you go. Your dinner! Your dinner! What is he, Joe? I don't know, but the hook. Look, it was around his stomach. That's crazy. That's a beautiful fish, guys. So, I got a live mullet. A frisky little guy. Um, he is too hyper fast for most of the snapper. So, we're gonna go like this. Cut his tail. Watch he it. doesn't feel any pain there. Let's like practically just like spin. Just amputating so, a fish, uh, yeah. He'll be a lot slower now. And he'll swim wounded, giving off different vibrations. So the fish will sense him more. So, if a lot of times if you know you're on fish and you got a really fast bait, really live bait, really frisky bait, uh, cut off the tail and it'll slow them down and make it more appealing to fish to eat. It's a good one. It's on a live one too, so it might be a keeper mutton. It started pulling drag at one point. It might be a keeper mutton. I don't know what the trigger fish. Queen, you can't keep those. Trigger fish. It's the one type of trigger fish. This is probably the coolest trigger fish you'll see. Coolest fish you'll see today. I'll show you guys why they call them trigger fish. So these fish, while they taste excellent, this type, specific type, the queen trigger fish, you cannot keep. But see this fin? I'll push as hard as I want and it won't go down. They call them trigger fish because this little fin is called the trigger. You push that, the fin folds in just like that. This is a live mutton or a live. What's this, guys? Go look, go look, go look. Grouper. Oh, undersized red. 
Oh, we got red in 100 feet of water. It's crazy. You gotta be 20 inches, but look at that. Look how cool what the color fish. is on it. We have to vent it and get it back down as soon as we can. Draining? Yep. Yeah, he's drained pretty much. There we go. I don't know if you heard that. Let's uh, throw him back. I'll just wait. Just hold him there and see. Yeah, he'll go. He's good. Straight down. All right, guys. I've been fishing for a solid like hour and a half now. Pub sub break. Always the best. Always the best. Pick him up before we head out today. And uh, it's going to keep us energized so uh, there's no fighting on the boat because me and Jack are about to grab each other's throats prior to this. Yeah, real, real. Don't let it go slack. Don't let it go slack like that. Another group. Oh, red. Same, same thing. On the side. It's okay. Or on. Feels better. Watch him be another queen trigger. I got him off bottom quick though. Locked down drag. Decent heavy line off. And then once you get him up high, guys, their air bladder expands. And they just float right up. Although this guy's not. What is he, John? What do you see? I see color. Mutton. Alright, something three for me today, guys. Um. Damn. That's tough. These things fight, though. For a little, like. What would you give this guy, like, 14 inch fish? They fight really hard. Another small one. I'm only recording because you're sitting on the, the live well and. I need a live bait. So. Oh, okay, you know, he's actually pulling. I see color. Mutton snapper. Yeah, mutton. mutton. Keeper right, mutton. Oh, that's another queen. Oh my, okay. You caught in two queen trigger fish on two live baits. I think you need to be in a timeout, Johnny. <laughs> I think this one's bigger than the last two. Oh my god. Oh, it's so fat. That's crazy. What a cool looking fish, though. That's something you put in an aquarium, but you can't keep them, so. Wait, Wait, some people do keep them as pets. Give me the venting tool. Unfortunately, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Undersized. We'll check. We'll check. 12 to the fork. No. These are size. Close the mouth. Yeah, under size. I'm gonna jump from other fishermen. Come on. They're all pulling. Ah. Yellow tail. Keeper. Nice. The live bait. Live bait, that's what I got on the Alright, guys, a little switch up for spots. We're done bottom fishing. It's okay. We went over our trusty wreck. We know there's some AJs there, some grouper, Almacos, right. and we're doubled up already. There's some live mullet out. And I'm uh, trying seconds. to get one on the jig. And Johnny's trying to have some fun on the jig. It's a little guy. Hopefully it's some good table fare. We'll see. Johnny, what is she? Oh, big keeper mutton. Keeper mutton, baby. Wow. Is it keeper? That's 18. Look at that, baby. That is a... I remember the jack pen, it looks like an Almaco. As Chagon Fishing would say, Johnny? Keeper Martin! That's a nice fish, and this bad boy, you can't get much better than this in South Florida for table fare, so. That's what we were going for inshore, so it's funny how we get this on a wreck. We're gonna do a couple more drifts. This spot is unbelievable. As you can see, the sonar is like lit up, so let's get some more fish. Oh, Johnny's on two. Triple header on the next drift, guys. That's something that got my line. That's probably me. I don't think I have a fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pulling. Oh, yeah. Triple dot. No, no, I'm off. I'm off. That wasn't. Oh, I'm off. I'm sure? Oh, it's not pulling.
Wow. Oh my god, look what I just found. This is what I snagged on. A very expensive oh slow pitch jig. <laughs> this thing's like 20 bucks. Is that right here? Yeah, I'm just gonna try and get by you guys. <laughs> Just hit my top shot, so I got about a little over 100 feet, around 100 feet left. Those almacos are great eating too, you know, like the bigger amberjacks, they're good to eat, but the almaco jacks, which are very closely related, but usually smaller, are even tastier. How would you cook it? Um, it depends. I honestly, barbecuing them is great. They are a little bit of a, Mommy. Uh, they have a lighter taste to them, right, contrary to most of the jacks, but uh, so they have a little bit of a whiter flesh, but they're still great on the barbecue, so I would recommend some sort of grilling, or even smoking. Catch of the day was that jig, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy oh my goodness. Keeper Martin! Holy mutton snapper, baby. We have found spot. We were in, like in shallow, about 100 feet. And I guess it's small. just small, little yellowtail, little muttons. Like I had 300 side muttons in the first hour. Now, these are the fish we were looking for. And guys, look at this. Most people run like 30 feet of lead when they're going for mutton snappers. Johnny, what's a, what's a lead? He has three Johnny, feet incredible. of lead. This is wow. Wow. Obviously a PB because I don't mutton snapper fish all the time, but uh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Okay, fishing. Exactly. Hey, we put them uh, on. This is man. a great time to say uh, subscribe to the channel. Less than was it, Joe? Like three percent of viewers that actually watch our videos are subscribed. One percent. One percent. Are, are we that bad, more. guys? <laughs> so uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button to single-handedly bring that number up. Yeah. Is he three for three for Alma Coast today? <laughs> we were all done the the drift, and he's still fishing. Catching our breaths. Yeah. I want to be two for two on this one drift. That's crazy. One drift, and the drift for us is like five minutes, guys. It's not long. Yeah, it's coming up easy now. Yeah, it's an almaco. <laughs> or some mutton. It's an almaco. <laughs> they like stop fighting at some point. Yeah, once the bearer trauma, I guess, reaches them. No, look at that. Come on. Nope, this is what they do all the time. They come up so easy. Yeah, because they have a, an air bladder that's expanded. Oh, wait, that's a blue runner. Even worse. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, we get a release on him. Watch his nose dive. Drop this hand up here. Reel. Reel, reel, reel. So I'm gonna put it over top. Yep, pull up and reel down. Pull up as you put the tip down, as you lower it, reel down. And then pull up. Use the rod as a lever and then reel down. And pull up and reel down as you go down. No. Yeah. I feel something. Oh real, 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 real. I'm trying. I know. I think you're great. Yeah, you're on my line. Watch out. No, because it's taking off. It's going on runs. Is that the AJ? Small one, it's bad. Stay on the left side. How big do they have to be? Come on, this side of you. Yo, your little fighting chair. I know, eh? His fighting chair. Watch the motor Oh, no. Well, guys, we are heading back in the inlet right now. We got some fish to clean. A uh, decently successful day offshore. We uh, got some good eating fish and a lot of keeper fish. So uh, we'll see you guys back at the cleaning station. So we got three different species that we're going to be eating. Um, 
we was going to show you how to clean one side of each, the other side is the same, just to show you the differences within these fish. So first off, we're going to start off with the Namaco jack. This incision behind the pectoral fin come up to the head, and this knife is cutting through it like butter. This, once you get there, you can kind of glide all the way along. Just like that, once you get to the tail, poke through, swipe up. Once you get started, smooth sailing, as I like to say. Kind of like the water today, you know? Not too rough, very smooth. You gotta be aware, these fish, like the other jacks in their family, have a raised spine. So you gotta cut up, then slice, cut up to get over it, and then slice down. And these fish make for a very easy, quick fillet job. A couple of ribs that I just want to cut out. And there you go. There's some few little worms in it. These are harmless to eat. You can pick them out before or you cook them. You don't taste them at all. They don't have any flavor. A um, couple of pin bones out there that I will cut off after I finish skinning it. But as I said before, very easy fish to clean. I don't know. Go over it. I don't know muttons that well. Go over it. Yeah, I'm going right over it. Anyways, we're gonna start. It's almost it's the exact same as the regular snapper. Big scales. Very big scales. They're tough to get into. There's a couple knives that have like a serrated edge. The new deck stream I know. A lot of guys love that for cutting in and getting it into those scales when you start. And again, a raised spine, so you cannot swipe these fish. You know, you, you see us do our salmon completely differently. Because salmon have such like weak meat that you can't you can't fillet it like this method. You have to do the swipe method. Um, there's that rib cage, which isn't too bad. It's laid down, and that's basically it. Their ribs go right until there. That's why most guys will cut like that up with a snapper. But like I said, really easy. You gotta get them on ice, burn fillet. I mean, we can show you the yellow tail, but it's the same thing. We're gonna get to the kitchen for you guys. So, we are here at the charcoal grill, and we're gonna show you guys how we're gonna do the Almaco Jack. So I think the snapper is pretty self-explanatory. You can go online and search up a million different ways to cook it, and each recipe will be delicious in its own way. But I'm gonna show you how I like to cook the Almaco Jack. So, we have our charcoal barbecue. We've already cooked the rest of our food, hot dogs, hamburgers, shrimp, whatever on here and what we did we light, light, laid down a piece of tin foil on top of it so the fish won't stick to the grill. You're going to take your olive oil and just drizzle some on the pan to make, or on the, not the pan but the tin foil to make sure that it doesn't stick and make sure you spread that around decently and then you're going to take your fish fillets. We got two fillets here, skinless, boneless, we took out the pin bones and just Lie it down straight onto the tin foil. Now, you guys are going to be like, oh, you didn't put any seasoning on it. You're not going to season this fish? Well, we are. I'm going to show you something that I think every chef should have at their disposal. Lowry seasoned salt. This is delicious on whatever you put it on. Chicken, fish, iguana, anything really. So you're just going to sprinkle some on. And then we will put some on the other side after we flip it as well. What the charcoal is going to do, it's going to give the fish a little bit of a smoky flavor and also ensure that it is cooked evenly. And that uh, seasoned salt is just going to pack a little bit of extra flavor. So we're using our spatula to flip it. Cut. Uh, <laughs> Nice. That, that this is the thing with cooking, you know. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, that flip didn't go to plan, but we improvise and adapt. And you can see how readily flaky this uh, this meat is. A little bit of sticking. We believe that's because we cooked it very close to the uh, charcoal. So for next time, we'll learn from our mistake and maybe bring it up a level or two. Oh, smoke bomb, right? 
but that one was a much cleaner flip. And now we're gonna put some more Lowry season salt on the other side. And sprinkle some on. And we'll let that cook all the way through. So what we did off camera is we lifted this up one level just so it wouldn't burn the outside too much, the second side, and it wouldn't stick too much. But our Almaco Jack is ready to take it off. So I got my lovely assistant Jack here holding the plate for me. There we go, that's we hold it properly. And we're just gonna slide that off the grill. And the olive oil is helping make sure that it doesn't stick. Obviously you're gonna have a little bit of it sticking. That is non-negotiable, but you wanna minimize breaking it apart so it gives you a nice thick filet. Look at that guys. Um, that's how to cook Almaco Jack on a charcoal barbecue. We're gonna give it a taste test. Sharon, can I taste it? Yeah. Really good, actually. Uh, whoever made this, whoever the chef was who made it, took a lot of time and prepared it well. Yeah. So, so what does uh, what does it taste like? What, what uh, type of fish does it taste like, in a sense? Nothing, actually. Has some unique taste. taste? Like just try it, Johnny. Just try it. Like I got nothing from him. Paired it well with what? <laughs> The thing I like about Almaco Jacks is very similar to Amber Jacks in taste, except these are thinner fillets, which means that they'll usually get a more even cook and they won't dry out as much when you cook them. But you could not tell me that this is a Jack. It doesn't have the same thick bloodline, doesn't have the, the strong fishy flavor. It's more comparable to a lighter uh, flush fish. So I highly recommend if you guys catch any Almaco Jacks, you keep them, throw them on ice, and cook them on the barbecue, because uh, if not, you'll be kicking yourself. So anyways, that's all for the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time on JK Fishing.